the study of violence is not the same as the study of crime. Uh, these are often spoken together as if they're, they belong to the same subject. But actually, most crime is not violent, and most violence isn't criminal. Um, for example, suicide is a form of lethal violence, violence that kills a person, uh, but it's not a crime. There are more suicides than homicides in every developed country on Earth. Warfare is not a crime to the citizens of the country that's committing the war. Sometimes we, as an exception, speak of a country as having committed a war crime. But the much more common pattern is that countries consider it a crime when their young men refuse to kill other people. In fact, until recently, uh, even the most uh, progressive, liberal, democratic countries on earth, in Europe, in America, would uh, take our young men and stand them up against a brick wall and in front of a firing squad and shoot them if they refused to kill other people uh, on the basis that they were being traitors or that they were uh, deserters or you know refusing to fight in the nation's wars. Capital punishment is not a crime in the states that, uh, that authorize it. Of course, the United States is the only Western democracy that still practices capital punishment. In the states that authorize it, in the U.S., that's, uh, that's not a crime. So I'd say most violence is not criminal. And most crimes are not violent. Most, most crimes, both in terms of the ones that are enumerated in law books and the ones that are committed by people, are either property crimes you know, stealing things, but not hurting people, uh, in, you know, physically injuring people. Or they are violations of the drug laws, or they are so-called crimes against public morals, like prostitution or gambling and things like that. So the study of violence is, to me, is in some ways as important a problem in public health and preventive medicine as we have in this world.